recite the chant on the Brahma Viharas to tie up our loose ends with the world of beings. The beings, particularly the ones that we have dealings with today or in our family. We want to bring those narratives to a nice close, at least bring the narratives to the fact that you're meditating. So you're meditating in the context of those narratives because you want beings to be happy. You want to develop the skills so that you can be equanimous in areas where you can't make a difference in the world. You want to think in those ways so that if while you're meditating you're on the breath, other narratives do come up. You remind yourself of the narratives come back here. Everything should be focused in here right now. So if you think of somebody, somebody's face appears in your mental eye, wish them goodwill and remind yourself, okay, if you really have goodwill for that person, really good have have goodwill for yourself, you'll come back here to the breath. Because you want to be able to give this your total attention. And you're looking at it in a different framework. As the Thai Johns often like to say, when you're sitting here with your eyes closed, there's no man, there's no woman, there's no being. There's no race, there's no ethnic identity, there's just awareness and the breath. You want to keep everything on that level. So you can get used to looking at your awareness on that level and see what's going on. How those ideas of world and beings and and whatnot get created, how they take hold of the mind. But how can, you can also have an area of the awareness that lies beyond them, it has nothing to do with them. It's just you, not even you, just the awareness with the breath. There will be a you running the, the show for a while. Make it one whose interest is just being with the awareness. Totally with the awareness, totally with the breath. Don't go casting your eyes down the path to what comes next. The Zen master Dogen has a nice comment. He says that the development of the path is the same thing as the realization of cessation. Now, often that's taken out of context where people say, well, he's saying that the path is the goal. And that's not what he's saying. He says the activity of developing the path is the same as the activity of realizing cessation, which means you don't look anywhere else. As you develop concentration on the breath, there in that act of developing concentration, things are going to open up. So don't keep casting one eye down to the end of the path. Cast all your gazes right here at the breath. Give it your full attention. But you don't even have to listen to this Dharma talk. It's here as a fence, so that if the mind leaves the breath, it runs into the fence and goes back. Remember the quality of jhana, the word jayati, which is the verb that goes for jhana. It has two meanings. One, it means to do jhana, and also it means to burn, but to burn with a steady flame unlike other verbs for burning in Pali. This is a fire you want to develop. There's one point where the Buddha compares this to the Brahmanical practice of stoking the inner fire. You probably know in the Upanishads they would talk about the fire sacrifice and saying, well, it's really referring to the fire inside. And the Buddha says, well, that's precisely what we're doing with concentration. It's our fire inside. I was reading a scholar just the other day commenting on this, how peculiar it was that the Buddha usually talks about putting out fires, but here he's talking about stoking a fire. That's because jayati is to meditate and is also to burn. Steady flame, the kind of flame by which you can read a book, see things clearly. Not the flame that jumps around and casts weird shadows on the wall and flickers a lot and makes it hard to read. You want to read your mind by the light of this cool fire, as John Lee calls it, the cool fire of jhana, jhana gi. So make it a steady flame and tend to it as you would to any kind of fire. In the beginning it's going to be small, 
So you protect what small concentration you have, what small focus you have, until it catches and it's strong enough. But then you can think of it spreading out. Find a spot where you can stay focused and look after it, protect it. Think you're cupping it with your hands from all the distractions outside. And wait till it takes. And then when it takes, okay, then you can let it spread. The sense of ease that develops, the sense of well-being that develops. And probably they use the word bitti, which is often translated as rapture. And sometimes it's not that strong. Sometimes it's more simply a sense of refreshment. You feel cool, refreshed, sitting here. This cool fire. And when you spread it, you don't have to push it. Just think of it allowing. Think of the mind allowing the fire to spread as it spreads down the, the lines of your veins and the lines of your nerves and out to every pore. And then do your best to maintain it. Both the John Lee and John Fung would talk about three stages. You do it, and then you maintain it, and then you use it. And the maintaining it is a special skill. In other words, you have to learn not to give in to the voices that say, okay, that's enough of that, now it's time to move on, or what's next? I'm, I'm on a path, and this is obviously just one step of the path, and what's the next step? You say, no, you have to develop this. Think of a John Cha's image, that the path is like a mango. And you don't go anywhere with a mango. The mango just sits there, but it ripens. So you're going to stay right here. So get accustomed to the fact that this is where you're going to stay. This is where the real work is done. This is where things are going to open up. Give it your full attention and develop what you've got here. Let it ripen. And if that voice comes up again, you have to just drop it again. Because a centered mind is something that's really valuable on the path. It's an important skill. You notice in that chat we had last night on the factors of the path, the description of right concentration is by far the longest of the descriptions and the most varied as you go through one stage and then the next. But where are the stages? They're all right here, and simply in the intensity with which you relate to the breath. And the efficiency with which you relate to the breath. In the beginning, you're not quite so efficient. You've got to adjust this, adjust that. Remind yourself to come back. Remind yourself to come back. Work with the pleasure. Work with a sense of refreshment that comes from the breath. There's a fair amount of work to do in the first stage. And then when you're really there, you can drop a lot of that work and just be with the sensation of the breath. Think of the awareness and the breath becoming one. They both fill the body together. You don't have to do any adjusting at that point. You're just right here with it. And you stay. And part of the mind will say, well, this is dumb. And you have to say, no, this is not dumb. This is a skill. And it will argue. It will say, hey, I've got to be thinking about things. I've got to analyze things. Not yet. The first step is to develop this. Because as the state of mind is developed, insights will come. Now you have to now, there are basically two ways of doing it. Sometimes they just come on their own. Other times you pose a question or just ask a question in the mind, and an answer will come. Other times you have to do a little more active analysis. But in any of those cases, whether the insight comes unbidden or whether it becomes because you asked, you can't fully trust it. Just because something arises in a still mind doesn't mean that it's true. You've got to test it. Now, the best insights are the ones that are actually relevant to what you're doing right now. You can ask yourself, if I feel blocked, where's the blockage? Do 
if I feel still at ease, what's causing that? If I'm feeling anxious, what's causing the anxiety? What can I do to drop that? And see what comes. Don't do too much analysis. Just pose the question and see if an answer comes. And if an answer comes, then you say, okay, what, in what way would this be useful? What do I do with this? Sometimes the insights will come into what's the nature of the world and the nature of reality, and you just drop those for the time being. You want to know what's the nature of my concentration and how can it be improved? Those are the questions that are really relevant right now. Those are the ones whose answers you can actually put to use. As for other insights, if they're not really relevant to what you're doing right now, just drop them. Don't be too amazed by them. Don't be too protective of them because they can very easily destroy your concentration. You know, a lot of people want to have visions in their co concentration or want to have insights coming. And there's an interesting passage in a John Lee where he treats these things as obstacles in the concentration. When they come, you've got to learn how to deal with them in a way that doesn't pull you out. You want to keep your frame of reference here with just breath and awareness. Make those the terms of what's going on, because this is how you get in touch with the processes that are going on in your mind, which is where all the work is going to happen. So be totally absorbed in what you're doing. That's for where it's going to go, or what the next step is. You don't think about that right now. You just get totally focused on this step. because it's in allowing what you've got here to mature and grow. That's what would lead you down the path. It doesn't come from having a map in your hand and saying, okay, I know I've got this one. You sort of check that off and then move on to the next item on the list. As with everything in the Buddha's lists, you don't really leave one factor to go to the next. You just add new factors on. And same with the factors of the path. You start with right view, and then you are basically learning how to develop right view. In this case, you're developing right view by learning how to concentrate the mind. And your skill and your awareness of what's happening, that's what adds more depth and detail to your right view. As for when the insights come, again, you don't have to leave concentration. You don't have to leave the jhana. You can do the work there, right here. So be absorbed right here, right now. Get really into this frame of reference of just awareness and breath. And for the time being, you let the rest of the world go. And world here it also includes your sense of your identity and your roles in the world and all that. Just let them go. You're dealing with awareness and breath. And that's all you have to take care of. Because when you're really with this frame of reference, it'll take care of you.